Hi and welcome back to Divine Lady Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we're here to make a cute little basket for all our sewing supplies. So let's get started. <laughs> making a little basket for English paper piecing or for whatever you want to use it for as you can see it fits a lot of stuff in it so we've got this is a project that I've been working on and you've probably seen it a couple of times that is the one I've talked about on my floss tube and crafting with DDs so basically I had another container that I was using and I couldn't see everything in it like it's it, it's a plastic one and it was sturdy and it did the job and it sort of held everything but I wanted something that I could just take um, that was a little bit more prettier than just a plastic container so I thought well I'm gonna make a basket and this is the basket that I've made it holds my embroidery scissors I've got a ruler in there I've got some wonder clips I've got a friction pen I've got um, my fabric I've got all the hexagons that I've prepared some papers and I've still got a spare pocket and I can fit my pattern in it so the basket actually measures uh, the base of the basket is about six and a half inches and um, I'm just trying to think of, and it's about six inch five and a half to six inches depending on your seam allowance but that with everything in it it is sitting um, from the cutting table just under six inches and it is six and a half inches across from corner to corner okay so that is what the basket is going to look like so you can see that it is quite deep and it holds quite a bit this would be a great fat quarter um, holder as well so you can see there I've got uh, five fat quarters sitting there you could have probably 10 to 15 fat quarters sitting in this and they just sit nicely into your storage cupboard we're going to be doing a couple of different things today we're going to be um, using our pinking shears which I usually use for um, clearing up uh, some of my seams. We're also going to be doing some hand stitching. So these are just tacked on with a couple of stitches in each one. And then we're going to sew some buttons on as well. So let's get into it. All right, so we're going to be making our basket and we're going to need a few things today to make it. So you're going to need some fat quarters two you're going to need some uh, shape flex 101 and some fusible fleece and you're going to need your general sewing supplies but a few extra things that you're going to need is some buttons to match your project uh, you'll probably need to get your uh, pinking shears out and your normal scissors a couple of quilting rulers your rotary cutter to cut your fabric and also a hand thread needle with matching thread so i've got one here that's already threaded up with navy blue but that's just so i can see it on my uh, desk here and so basically you, that's all you're really going to need of course you're going to need 9 and 9 pad and you're also going to need your working sewing machine all right so i'm going to get all of this out of the way and then we'll talk about the fabrics that we're going to need okay so as I said we're just going to be using fat quarters today and everybody's got a ton of these and these little the, the re, as I said I'm the reason that I'm making this today is because I need a little EPP basket that I can just put all my stuff in for a particular project that I'm going to do so this is perfect for that now while I was cleaning up the other day I found this um cute little bundle of fat quarters and I thought this will be perfect for that it goes nicely with what I'm, I'm using it for uh, I just I'm using the flower ones which I'll show you in just a moment but this is by um, I believe it's by Melissa Mora and it's called blooms and bobbins and it was distributed by Riley Blake now I have no idea how long I've had this for but I'm thinking that it may have come in the sew sampler box and I haven't got that for well over 18 months so it is a pretty old one you might be able to find it somewhere but yeah so just bear with me in a few of my projects because I'm using up some of my fabrics that have been here for a while now what you'll need to do once you've selected your fat quarters if they've been folded up for a while you're going to have to get some best press and your iron and your ironing pad and you're going to have to give them a really good press to get those creases out all right also you're going to need some shape flex 101 that's my favorite woven interfacing and then also my favorite uh fleece to use is fusible fleece of course and this is matilda's own but pelon or legacy or any one of those will work just the same all right so once you've got those um you're going to pick your uh fabrics and we are going to place our fusible fleece and our s SF101 onto our fabrics after I've pressed them and these are cut at 18 inches square 
Now, when we put our interfacing on, we're going to do it a little bit different than what we normally do. We are going to have our uh, ShapeFlex 101 on the outside fabric, so this is my outer fabric, and on my lining fabric, which is my which looks like stitching, is going to have the fusible fleece. It does. Um, I just find it a little bit easier to work with when it is this way for this particular basket. I've tried it both ways and I prefer it on the lining, the fusible fleece. So as I said, they are 18 inches square. So get all your fabrics prepped, get all your interfacing on and set them aside for a moment. And then you're going to need four matching buttons to your project. So I had these... Um, cute little buttons in my stash I got these from Big W ages ago here in Australia but any button that you can find on Amazon or anywhere like that or if you've got a really pretty um, button buttons that you want to use maybe you've recycled an old jacket or something like that and kept the buttons off it you can use those buttons as well it doesn't matter what size button you use the only thing I will say is for this size basket you don't want to use a really small button all right so I've got my four buttons uh, I've got plenty to choose from, but I've gone with pink. And then all we're going to do with our, um, once we've got our fabrics pressed, we're going to move on to assembling up our basket. All right, so I'm going to just move some extra stuff out of the way. And hopefully you can see most of that on camera. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our lining fabric and we're going to take our exterior fabric and we're going to place them right sides together. Then what we're going to do is we are going to clip or pin that and I'm just going to clip it. Clip that all the way around. I'm just making sure our raw edges are lining up. If they're a little bit not lining up perfectly, that is okay because we are going to pink our edges and that will help neaten everything up and even everything up so there's no need to stress about that okay when you get to your last side we're just going to leave it a bit of an opening about three inches will be enough and then on this side I will actually just put a couple of pins just to remind me of where I want to have that opening and that's sort of in the center now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch all the way around remembering to leave this opening here and we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end so when I go to the sewing machine I will actually start at this point here go all the way around like do a back stitch go all the way around and then do a back stitch here and then we'll come back to the cutting mat and we will sort the rest out So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pinking shears and we're going to pink all the way around and then we'll turn it in the right way. So just snipping close to your stitches but without going into your stitches. This is going to get rid of some of the bulk in our little project here. Okay, so once we've done that, what we're going to do is get rid of all our little bits and pieces off it. We're just going to open up this opening and we're just going to reach into one of the corners, separating your fabrics from one another and go into one of the corners and put your index finger in there and then with your thumb, just push that little corner out of the hole and then you can just pull that through nice and easily. And as you can see, I'm sort of rotating it as I'm doing it and pulling some out and that just makes it super easy to bring everything out to the outside then what we're going to do is poke all our corners out um, you can use a chopstick or you can use what I normally use which is a, a creaser for um, scrapbooking and it's got a dull end so I find that it, it still gets the the corners nice and crisp but to give it a helping hand I sort of just put my index finger in into each corner and just give them a really good push out and if you've got long nails this really helps to get those out and I just 
sort of play around with it until I get them all out. Okay, so once you've got that out, what you're going to do is you're just going to roll your seams. And that just helps the seams to line up really nicely. And you're going to do that all the way around. Okay, smoothing everything down, making sure that all our seams are rolled nicely. Before we press it, I'm just going to roll this in a quarter of an inch. And then I'll do the same with the other side. You can also use pins here instead of clips. That's entirely up to you. But you can see there that if I line that up on my board, it's down, it's down a little bit. So I know that I've got to play with it. But I'm going to give it a press before I press here and just get that the either side to sit nicely because it could be that my seams are not rolled properly and they're just not sitting right. So this side takes a little bit of fiddling just so we can get a nice neat finish. And you don't want your iron too hot at this stage because you've got that fusible fleece in there and you don't want to make it shrink or anything like that. So I've got my iron set on a low to medium heat and that still does everything that I need it to do. It just um, won't scorch my uh, fabric and it won't make that um, interfacing on the inside of the fusible fleece um, shrink down. All right, so we have some nice crisp seams here and I'm just looking at that now and that's just got to be fiddled with just a little bit more. Get that to sit a little bit better and then we will be able to give this a press. Just little things that I like to do to get things to sit nicely. All right, I'm happy with how that is. And so now I will give, take the Wonder Clips off one at a time and just give it a press with the tip of my iron and then put that Wonder Clip back on. Same thing again here. And then right at the end. These are just little things that I like to do, as I said, to just give me a neater finish for things. All right, and then I'm just going to press the rest of the basket. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to do a top stitch all the way around and we're going to do an eighth of an inch top stitch. Okay, don't forget to make your uh, stitches a little bit longer and that way they'll sit nicely and you won't get that jagged look to your top stitch. that all the way around and you can see here I've backstitched when I got around to the to where I, I started and it's not um, bunched up or anything like that so get rid of any of your long threads that you need to and next we're going to assemble our little basket okay so once you've got rid of all your threads and you've top stitch you're going to have your basket with the lining facing up and then we're going to bring our corners up to one another and I'll just clip these in place so they don't move on me and then we're going to get our ruler and our friction pen and from the fold we're going to come up four inches and just put a mark and then from this edge here we're going to come across four inches so right along the edge of the fabric there, not your stitching, and we're going to put a dot there. Then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So once you've done that, you're going to join your dots. So just lay your ruler on there. And draw a line. And then you'll do the same on the other side. Then what we're going to do is open it up, turn it, and fold it this way
making sure it's all nice and smooth on the inside and then we clip it so it doesn't move on us and then we're going to do exactly the same thing again so we're going to come up four inches and make a mark and along the fold we're going to come in four inches make a mark and then join those dots and repeat for the other side okay so once you've got that done what you're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch on this line and we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end and you're going to do that on both sides So now that we've done that, what we need to do is our other ones. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to fold our sides like so. And we're going to get it to lay as flat as we can with everything lining up. So we'll use our Wonder Clips to line up our corners and our side. Okay, and I'm going to get it to lay as flat as I can and make sure that nothing is crinkled up in there or anything so everything is out of the way so it's nice and flat so you can see there that i'll be able to sew that because it's sitting nice and flat and to just help me out i will just put a wonder clip there and a wonder clip there and then on this side i will again go in there make sure that all the fabric is laying flat and get my corners to line up and my sides Bring them together, pop a wonder clip, and then just make sure that all my sides are lining up where I've top stitched. Pop a clip there. Now I can feel in there that that's nice and flat, so I don't have to worry about it. And like always, if to help me out, just put my hand in there and make sure that I can't feel any bumps or lumps in there. I'll just put a wonder clip there then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and do exactly what we just did and do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so we're, once we've designed that down, we can get rid of all our long threads so it's nice and neat. And then we're on to the next step. All right, so <laughs> at the moment, we've just got this weird looking shape thing. So now what we're going to do is we're not going to cut these edges off here. We're going to leave them as they are. Okay, and you can see in there that it's sitting nicely. We don't have any creases in our corners. I'm not sure if you can see in there or not, but we don't have any creases in our corners. Everything is sitting really nicely. At this stage, we want to get rid of our friction pen marks. So we'll just grab our ironing pad and iron and we'll just those bits that we just sewed we'll just where we've um used the friction pen we'll just uh iron that off okay and because we only marked on one side it's okay and because we've stitched under it we shouldn't be able to see that at all it shouldn't come back or anything like that i'm not worried at all it is just a basket after all it's not anything that i'm selling or anything like that i'd probably use chalk if i was making these to sell so once we've got that now we've still got this shape here now we're not going to cut these edges off as i said we've taken off all of our um bits and pieces from the like the threads and all that sort of stuff we've got rid of all those long threads and we've got rid of all of our friction markings and so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little basket and we're going to put our center finger down in the corner so i'm not sure if you can see that or not but we've got little corners inside our basket here i'm going to put my finger down in that corner and i'm going to turn the basket so it's laying on my palm like this and i've got this little bit here and then all i'm going to do is pop my thumb or finger in there and i'm going to squash that down so you can see there that I've just pushed that down like so. 
okay now what we need to do here is we're going to put a couple of tacking stitches here and here with our hand thread and this will stay how it is what we're going to do is we're going to get our needle and thread and we're going to do a couple of tack stitches now we're not going to come all the way through to the top we're going to tack it from underneath and so I will start it under here I'm going to use blue thread on the first one just so you can see it and it doesn't really matter because I've got blue thread anyway so what I've done is I've just done a little knot and I'll just get rid of the tail and this is going to be underneath it so I'm going underneath here and I'm just going to take I'm not going all the way through to the lining I'm just taking a little bit of a bite and then I'm going to bring that down now you can see that that's about a quarter of an inch in okay underneath there and then I'm just going to pull that a little bit tight and then what I'm going to do is going to put my thumb in here and I'm going to roll that back and then just where I've gone in I'm going to tack through the um, exterior fabric so I haven't come through into there I'm just doing it on the exterior fabric and I haven't gone through the lining either on the main part of the basket now you will be able to feel it if you go through okay and I just do I don't know if you can see that very well I do apologize but yeah I just tack that down like so and you can see there it's just tacked it and I do that probably three maybe four times and I just try and then that way like I've used a dark blue thread but I haven't got any that's come through here and none through to the back okay to the inside and this can be a little bit fiddly but just play around until you get comfortable and then you can secure it in place Okay, and so I will just finish that off by slipping that through and then I will get my scissors and I will snip right down as close as I can to it and then I'll just tuck that in. And there we go our little side is now um, secure so we're going to repeat that all the way around okay so they're all sewn down now so you can see there that they're like little pockets so we can put our pens and all that sort of stuff in there so they'll just sit there quite nicely as you can see all right so the next thing is we've got these to to contend with now so this is where we need to get our buttons and we need to get some thread that actually matches our buttons because we don't want to have the dark blue all right so you can use um either embroidery floss or you can just use normal sewing cotton and i'm just going to use normal sewing cotton today but the first thing that i want to do is i want to actually just fold this down so you can see here we've got some stitching where we've um, stitched our darts our little pockets in what we need to do is just put our fingers there and just fold this over okay and then just finger press it but we don't want to push it down so it starts to curl we want it to just sit there nicely so you can see here it hasn't actually gone past there and then we'll just grab some wonder clips and you can just finger press that into place and then we will just fold that down on this side come to the door to talk to me but I can't have it in here because she knocks everything over when I'm okay see how this one's rolled over a little bit more than I want it to so I've just got to bring that up a little bit they're both out there now <laughs> all right now what we're going to do as I said we're going to get thread to match so I'm just going to grab my thread and all I'm using is Guterman thread I'll just take a length of that and then I'll grab my sewing needle and I'll just thread one end through and then I'll grab my other end and bring it up to that and then I will just create a knot in the bottom And basically all I'm going to do is grab my button and I'm going to place it 
so you can see here where I'm placing it so there's my top stitching I'm making sure that the button is touching either side so if your button is bigger it's going to go further up so mine's a little bit smaller so basically all I'm going to do is have it there and then I'll just my first stitch I'll just go through this top layer here and that will hide my knot and then all I'm going to do holding that in place is I'm going to go down and I am going to go through the lining this time. Okay, just turn that around so it's a little bit easier so I can get in and out of the lining. And then I'm just holding that button in place so it's not moving on me. If it moves a little bit, that's okay. And then I'm just going to go backwards and forwards. Now, I, as I said, I am going through to the lining, but this is a very pale pink, so I won't see that, that um, stitching in there. And it'll just hold my lining into place too. I will find the my mojo of where to hold it in a moment. <laughs> I'm just going to go through several times. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm usually with buttons, and these aren't going to get used, but usually with buttons I like to go through at least seven to ten times if it's a button that's going to get used but this isn't a button this is more of a decorative thing so basically all i'm doing is just securing that in place but this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and i'm going to just come through at the back there and make sure my threads are even and i'll just tilt the button and i'm just going to end underneath there so that way i don't have a knot on the inside and I'll just pull that through once and I've created a loop and I'm just going to go through that there and then I can just grab my little pointy scissors and get right under that button and snip that off okay and then that is our button done all right so now that you've done that what you're going to do is you're going to do that to each one and making sure that they're all lined up where they need to be and then that's it our basket will be finished so i'm going to go ahead and do that okay so now i have got those all sewn down you can see there that my basket is a nice shape it's standing up on its own and the best part is i can actually fit a little six and a half inch ruler in there and a whole heap of other stuff so i can have some fabric in there i can put my each project i could actually make a whole heap of these and just have projects in them and i can also have my little pens in there and my little ruler that i use a lot i can have some extra wonder clips put onto the edge of it as well and i can just fit so much stuff in and i can have my little scissors my rotary cutter even fits in there quite nicely as well. I can have all the bits and pieces that I need for my um, English paper piecing. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed making this cute little basket. It's perfect for the sewing room. You could put so many things in there from fat quarters to store on your shelves to as I'm going to use it for my uh, EPP um, supplies and everything for projects and i'm going to make a few more because i've got a couple of those projects on the go at the moment so as i said thank you so much for joining me today if you like this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below and uh, leave us a comment and tell me what you thought and if you are a returning viewer or you're new here and you've yet to subscribe make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts but that's it from me today have a great day everybody and i'll see you all again next time Bye for now.